Good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope all of you guys got good rest. Uh, I can't believe it's already the middle of April. It seems like it's been forever since we got together at church. But I really hope that you guys are able to worship God the same way as we uh, get together every Sunday morning uh, to watch the videos, to praise Jesus, to listen to His Word. And I do pray and hope that someday we will be able to worship together. But until then, uh, we will have to worship uh, like this. So let's all stand up. Let's get ready to worship Jesus. Let's get ready to praise Jesus. Let's do a little stretch and we'll have Teacher Michelle lead us into a time of praise and we'll go into a time of God's Word. Let's go. God made me who I'm meant to be. He loves me just the way I am. God made me who I'm meant to be. His dream for me is so amazing. For this simple reason, I am happy to be me. Whoa, whoa, my God watches over me. Whoa, whoa, I feel like royalty. For this simple reason, I am happy to be me. As we continue in our worship, let's all recite the Apostles' Creed together. Are right, you guys ready? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Word of God comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 3 to 8. That's Philippians chapter 2 verses 3 through 8. Philippians is a book that you can be found in the New Testament. It's one of the letters that Paul wrote. So skip through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, uh, Acts, Romans, all the way, and you will see Philippians. So Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 to 8. You guys ready? Verse 3. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility... Count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself 
by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. This is God's word. Thanks be to God. Let me quickly pray for us and we'll begin our time in God's word together. Father, I want to thank you so much for being a God who always loves us, being a God who always protects us, and being a God that reminds us, Lord, that you are God and that we are not. We do thank you for reminding us, even through the coronavirus crisis, that you love us and you will never stop loving us. And you remind us, Lord, that we have a God who is in perfect control and we have a God who promises us not only life here on earth, but eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. So as we listen to your word together this morning, we do pray that you will help us to listen and listen well, to listen to your word and to obey uh, and to become your sons and daughters. We thank you again. Be with us. We love you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as we begin our time together this morning, I have a question for all of us. A question that I wanted to ask all of us. Now, how many of you guys, and I won't be able to see through the screen, but if you can raise your hand, how many of you guys have ever played in an orchestra before? Now, in an orchestra, there are people who play uh, different instruments like the violin or the viola or the cello and even the bass. I remember last year, some of you guys held a concert at church, and I was uh, so honored to be part of that as a guest to listen to all of you guys play such amazing music. Now, an orchestra is made up of not just one person, but many, many people. It's made up of a group of people who play an instrument. And then in order for an orchestra to sound amazing, what has to happen? Everyone needs to be in tune with each other and everyone needs to support each other for the for the harmony, for the symphony of the orchestra to sound amazing. Now, for those of you guys who don't play any instruments, maybe some of you guys play sports. Now, maybe some of you guys don't even play sports, but maybe some of you guys who don't play any instruments, who don't play any sports, I'm sure you have been involved in a group project before. Now, let me ask you a question. What makes a good group? Even if you have the best soccer player on your team, if the team itself is not unified, if the team is not playing together, it is a bad team. Even in a group project, you could have the smartest person in the class in your group, but if you're not working together, then it is not a good group. Now, this is what Paul is telling us in today's story in the book of Philippians. Paul was writing this letter to the church to a town called Philippi, to a church that is located in Philippi. And as Paul is writing this letter, he couldn't really visit the church because he was actually in prison. He was imprisoned by the Roman government because of his faith. But despite not being able to visit the people in Philippi, Paul still wanted to encourage them to be a good group. Paul still wanted to encourage them to be a church that is unified. And how can they do that? By living like Jesus. By living like Jesus. So then how did Jesus live? Or what does it look like to live like Jesus? Looking at today's verse, uh, Paul reminds us that Jesus lived a life of humility. Humility. Jesus humbled himself by putting God above all. And then Jesus humbled himself by putting others before him. So Paul encourages the church that in order for the church to be together, in order for the church to be unified, that lives like Jesus, they too must be humble and they too must have a servant's attitude by valuing others more than yourself, by valuing others more than yourself. So friends, what does it look like? What does it look like to value others more than yourself? And why would anyone want to do that, right? The world tells us, at least in the world that we're living in today, the world tells us that we are the most important, that I am the most important, and that I should value myself the most, that we are at the center of the universe. 
But when we look at the Bible, the Bible tells us, no, that's not true. The Bible tells us that, no, we are not at the center, but Jesus is at the center. The Bible reminds us that Jesus is at the center, and Jesus reminds us that we should value others more than ourselves. That we should value others more than ourselves. That's exactly what Jesus did for us, didn't he? Even though we didn't do anything for him, even though we disobey his commands, even though we don't follow after him and we follow other idols, Jesus still died on the cross for us. That's true humility. And that's what it looks like to value others more than yourself. Jesus always looked for a way to serve God, and he always looked for a way to serve others. Look with me today in verse 6 to 7. It says, Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself by taking the form of, not a king, but a servant, being born in the likeness of men. So then, friends, why do we have such a hard time valuing others more than ourselves? you guys have a hard time with that? I know I do at times. Why do we have a hard time valuing others more than ourselves? Maybe it's because there is no room for others in our lives. Maybe in our hearts, we are so full only of ourselves, only me, me, and me, that we think it's a waste to think about other people. We think there's not enough time to think about other people in our lives because we are so full of ourselves. And because of this, our friend Paul reminds us here that if we want to be a church that is unified, if we want to be a group that is working together really well, a church that really loves God and loves each other, then we need to have a serving attitude like Jesus. That means we need to have a serving attitude like Jesus. Rather than asking, what can this person do for me? Or what can she or he do for me? Or how can I benefit, benefit from this person? We need to be asking, how can I serve them? How can I serve this person better? Or how does Jesus want me to love this person more? Okay, but Pastor Gunn, how can we help others right now? Maybe some of you guys are thinking, well, it's because of the coronavirus. We're stuck at home. How do you expect us to help other people? We can't even go outside. Well, that's a really good question. I would say we can start serving like Jesus at home. We can start serving like Jesus at home. First, I think one of the ways we can serve other people is by praying for them. We can serve others by praying for our friends, praying for our doctors and nurses who are working over the clock, praying for our family members who are far, far away, our uh, grandparents, our, our uh, aunts, our uncles. We can pray and ask God to protect them, ask God to give them strength, ask God to, God to give them hope and courage. And second, we can serve our families. Now, I'm sure you guys are already doing this because you guys are such amazing people. But now that we're stuck at home, we have more time and more opportunity to spend time with our families. And I'm sure it's very difficult for you but for uh, not being able to go to school and play with your friends. But, you know, did you know that it's also difficult for your parents as well? For some, of your, uh, for some of your parents, they are unable to go to work because of this. They are having to stay home. And you know how hard it is to stay at home and try to work and to try to take care of you guys? I'm sure it's so difficult, but they will never say that it's hard. Maybe we can serve our family by, encouraging, by saying encouraging things to them. Maybe saying encouraging things to our parents, things like, Mom and Dad, I just want to know, I just want to let you know that I appreciate everything that you do for me. Or maybe we can just say a simple thank you. Mom, Dad, I just want to say thank you so much for everything that you're doing for me. Or another way we can serve our family is by maybe volunteering to do some chores, like taking out the garbage, or maybe even helping with cooking, or maybe even helping them with cleaning doing the laundry, whatever it takes, whatever it is, let's always remember that Jesus first served us. And as we think about how Jesus served us by going to the cross to die for us, I hope and pray that you and I will be encouraged to put others, that we will also be encouraged to put others first by serving them and by loving them just like Jesus did for us. 
So our big idea for today is put others first because Jesus put you first. Can you repeat after me? Put others first because Jesus put you first. Let's say that one more time. Put others first because Jesus put you first. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. God, I want to thank you so much for your word this morning in the book of Philippians. God, I want to confess that I am at times very selfish when I think about myself and only myself. But thank you for the Bible uh, message today, for reminding me that I need to think more about you and more about others who are also loved by you just as much. I pray that you will help me to have a serving attitude like Jesus, serving others on my knees in prayer, serving my family by helping them and encouraging them with my words. Whatever it takes, I pray that you will help me to be someone who encourages other people to love you more. We thank you. We love you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, at this time, let's go into a time of offering. Now, I know that many of us are unable to give offering physically, but we can pray in our hearts this prayer that we pray every Sunday. So you guys ready? Let's all close our eyes. Let's pray this prayer together. God, I give my life as an offering to you. Amen. If you're done praying, let's all stand up and get ready for our closing praise. And after we uh, sing this last song, we'll close with uh, the Lord's Prayer. And then we have a few announcements. Let's close together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen. 
Before we close, I just want to remind you that we are praying for you, all the teachers. Uh, really, really miss you guys. And I really hope that uh, you guys are uh, staying safe and you guys are able to still worship Jesus on Sundays. Uh, so uh, I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, even if it's difficult for you guys to stay home, maybe you can pray and ask God to give you strength, ask God to give you uh, motivation to do your schoolwork. And I really hope to see all of you guys next Sunday um, here uh, as we worship uh, online. All right, have a good week. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, it's been a while since we last saw each other and unfortunately we couldn't have a proper goodbye, but I hope you're all doing well and staying healthy. I know you might get bored and that you aren't used to having to stay home, but remember we're all doing our best to keep each other safe. Like you, I also have to take online classes and can't go out to see my friends. It can get a little lonely and stressful sometimes, but after reading my Bible, I found two verses that I that really helped me realize that I can find peace in Jesus. And that is John 16, verse 32 to 33. Verse 32, Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed it has come when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have, that you may find peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And I, I just really wanted to share that with all of you because it is really uplifting for me. And I hope that you guys, when you feel frustrated or alone next time, you can always remember that you can count on our Father in heaven and that if you pray to him, that you will find peace. I really miss all of you. I really hope you guys are doing well, and um, I hope to see you guys um, soon, like in a later time. Um, I hope you guys have an awesome day with your families. I love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.